I bought this nice looking TNT multimeter instrument to customize my bike, but I run there in problems which I try to understand and to solve it right now. Um, this is my bike, it's an old BMW and the plan is to remove the old cockpit, the whole cockpit and replace it to the little TNT. On the right hand you see a moto gadget. It acts as a reference instrument to see what's running wrong with the TNT. I have also prepared there an oscilloscope to catch the signals from the coil to understand what's wrong. Um, this is the coil. I have um, connected the oscilloscope to the plug on the coil which is directly connected to the CDI and the other little black plug is connected to the ground uh, that's the metal part of the coil now we run the bike to see what's happened 1270 so that's the same as, as this instrument also more or less the same as here Now you see the positive spikes, they are not that nice. And now you see the flipping needle. And also the wrong rotations. So, and now it's too hot. Yeah, oh, it's really hot, the engine. I don't want to destroy this bike. This oscilloscope picture shows us the signal by around about 1000 rotations per minute on my bike. So the signal comes between the coil and the CDI. This is where the most bikes deliver the signal. The coil is connected to plus voltage and the CDI will be close the circuit against the ground or zero voltage. And if you look to the signal, the first part, the green part, is the very controlled part of the signal. The red part, this is the uncontrolled part of the signal. And it shows that the TNT measure the red part instead the green part. So this could be the problem. Now I start to understand the problem and the first try was to fix this problem with an electrical control unit to bring the signal in a better shape for the TNT but the result was not at that high level what I was looking for so I have to find another way how we get the result on an acceptable level Therefore I have to know what is possible to measure with the TNT instrument and so I build it up a little labor for this to find it out. The first test is with a positive sinus wave and the setting on the TNT on a high signal and the signal count is 1. With a positive sinus wave I get a stable result. Even so with the sinus wave half by half, half minus, half plus, the result is stable. With a negative wave we get no display information from the TNT as expected. The next test is with a negative wave on the settings low signal and the setting count P1. You see everything runs fine and with a positive signal we get no display on the TNT as expected. 
with the TNT configuration settings to a high signal and the uh, um, signal count to 1 you see that the TNT will follow exactly the frequency. A high frequency shows high rotations and a low frequency shows us low rotations per minute. And the needle is stable and not jumping somewhere on the display. The exercise is now to find on a real bike in a real life a signal which is good enough for the TNT. Yes, of course, we can clean up signals with electronical filters, but they will also influence the original signal and maybe the result is not the reality. So in this case, we have to look for the right source where we can catch a proper signal. For the real display information, it is also important the signal counter and that must be, must be very flexible so that you can free configure how many signals you detect per one rotation. Look to the screwdriver in this picture. The instrument is connected between plus voltage and zero voltage or the ground. The negative voltage you will see only directly on the electrical generator of a bike so that means before the rectifier filter package. An electrical generator will almost deliver his power in a sinus wave. So in this case that could be the source also for the high and the low configuration of the TNT. If I try to measure with the high configuration the um, signal on the ignition coil then I get always not a proper signal. This is pretty clear from the constructive perspective of this point. Even so with the low configuration there I have no chance to measure a signal on the ignition coil in this case. From my point of view I want to measure the engine rotations on the generator but there I get in this case the best signal. This way is not that easy and it is dangerous. I play with a lot of power in this area. This is really only a solution for electronic specialists but I have to know exactly how the generator works so that means how high is the output of the generator and how is the generator constructed that means how many coils are in the generator and this is important for me to configure the TNT instrument on the right level so that means the impulse counter must be set to the right number of coils. In my case I need a signal counter value from 6. So the TNT is only able at the moment to deliver a counter of 4. My hope and my wish is that COSO will change the software in the TNT so that I can configure um, the signal counter on a wider range. But that would give me the flexibility to find on the bike the right input source for a proper signal and for a good result on the display. COSO is the manufacturer of the TNT instrument. I get in contact with the COSO support of Europe and told them the problem. They have sent me this filter to filter the signal from the ignition coil to get a better result. But the result with this filter was also not acceptable. 
I told COSO that I want to measure the signal from the generator but the TNT have not the possibility to configure the right value for the number of coils from my generator. COSO have sent me another in instrument where it is possible to configure a wider signal range so that it matches to my generator. Both instruments, the COSO and the TNT, are now connected to the generator of my bike and I have configured the signal counter to 3 so that means both instruments will display the double number of the real rotation and both have to display the same if it works. Now the engine is started and run on a little bit more than 1000 rotations per minute and both instruments display the same value a little bit more than 2000 rotations so two and a half thousand this is the double speed of that what the original instrument shows us now I try to hold 2500 rotations and both instruments have to display around about 5000 rotations and yes of course they do it on a stable value without flipping needles and stuff like that so now we need only or now I need only the right um, value to configure for the number of coils as I told before the maximum value for the TNT is 4 for the signal counter so I configured that to 4 and the TNT will display one and a half of the real rotations per minute. The maximum value for the COSO is 24 and so this is really on the safe side. For my bike I need the value 6 so I have configured this right now on the COSO and now we will see what's happened by the next test. Now the engine is started and I try to deliver two and a half thousand rotations per minute from the engine. And we show what the COSO and the T instrument will show us. The COSO shows us exactly two and a half thousand rotations and the TNT one and a half of the real rotation. That is the result as expected and the COSO delivers a really good result on an acceptable level. For this test I take the signal over two resistors directly from the generator. There you see the two resistors and the free cabling only for the test purpose directly connected to the red cable on the generator. So that's it. Yes, of course, I didn't notice from the beginning that the CDI system will deliver a ground signal instead of a positive signal. So in this case where the CDI system delivers a ground signal, it makes no sense to try to measure a positive signal, but then you will get also this ugly stuff and the instrument will not show you the truth. Um, but on my bike, on the BMW, is it the case that the CDI delivers uh, a ground signal and so um, in this case the instrument, the TNT, is not usable for this bike at the moment. Now I think this test um, brings a little bit light uh, about the rumors um, from the TNT instrument and yeah, we will see how we can fix this. Hopefully Koso will fix this issue in his own interests. I see there are two possible solutions. One solution is to change the software that you can add a higher number of s a signal counter so that you can uh, prepare the TNT to connect it against the um, generator and configure the right number of coils and the other solution is 
to add there a little electrical stuff that you are able to measure also a signal from plus against the ground. Important information at the end. All what you have seen here was f only for test purpose. So don't follow that. If you do this, you do this on your own risk. I'm not responsible for damage your bike or if you have some serious health problems afterwards. Think about this. This was only for test purposes. Goodbye.